I encourage all black women to, to, to be who they want to be. Whether you want to travel around the world or you want to be a doctor or you want to be a blogger, do it, girl. Because, you know, <laughs> I think the world owes that to black women to allow us to just be who we want to be. And that's what I call Black Girl Magic. Thanks for joining the CC America podcast, where we are getting mentally fit through testimonies of faith, inspiration, and transformation. We hope you enjoy the show. Good evening and welcome to another live taping of the CC America podcast. My name is Tamaria Jordan and I am your host. And tonight I have the amazing pleasure of interviewing Mrs. Carmen Jones. She is the founder and CEO of the Black Girl Social Club and she is promoting Black Girl Magic always. So let me give you a little bit of her background before we get started. Carmen is a Howard University graduate currently working on her MPA at Clark Atlanta University. She is originally from Richmond, Virginia and currently resides in Atlanta after having lived in Washington, DC for eight years. She is a content creator, published author and former TEDx host who again is dedicated to black girl magic always. She is a lover of the arts, having majored in theater when she attended the Appomattox Regional Governor's School for the Arts in high school. She spent a lot of time contributing to the Atlanta entertainment industry, working on TV sets, producing events and interviewing celebs like Kevin Hart, Will Packer, Music Soul Child and Lala Anthony to name a few. Among her friends, she has always been the social one, acting as the informal event planner, bringing women together and making connections. She spent a majority of her life teaching and mentoring children in underserved communities, working especially with young girls. She currently serves on the advisory board for the Birth Advocacy Project, also known as BEEP. BEEP advocates for equal access to quality prenatal and perinatal care for all families of color. They operate exclusively to promote social welfare through advocacy, and they are dedicated solely to lobbying for birth equity. Her goal is to empower and inspire Black women across the globe to walk in their purpose, speak their truth, and model authentic sisterhood for generations to come. I am so elated to welcome to the show my fellow dragon sister from ARGS, Carmen Jones. Welcome, mm -hmm. Carmen. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hello, fellow dragon. It's so good to be here. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I am excited to hear about your background and your story and, and how you started the Black Girls Social Club and anything else that you'd like to share with our listeners. So to kick us off, Carmen, how have life events shaped the person that you are or have become? Wow, that's a heavy question. So I'll start off by saying that I, I had a great upbringing, a great great childhood but I will say that my father played a significant role in the person that I am today he recently passed away in October of 2020 but I'm just so thankful that I got to spend 34 years with him <laughs> and he helped mold uh, me into the person that I am instilling you know integrity um always um telling me to be on the on the search for knowledge and to you know uh, be my own person and to stand on my own uh, two feet and you know treat people with respect and dignity and carry myself with dignity and he also taught me not to give up and so I think with all of those things um, and of course there's so much more um, and my mother also, she, she helped nourish me and helped me to become the person that I am as well. Um, she was very supportive, but I grew up as an only child. And so, you know, with that being said, I think my parents worked very hard to make sure that I was a well-rounded person who believed that I could do anything and, and, and taught me to believe that I could impact the world and other people around me. And so I think that is why I am who I, I know that that's why I am the person that I am today. So I, I attribute all of that to my parents. That is so beautiful. And, and again, condolences. 
Thank you. Thank you. You're mm-hmm. welcome. In terms of, you know, how you talked about being the woman that you are and, and walking with dignity and never giving up. I know mm-hmm. that I read your bio, but if you were to meet someone who never met you before, who would you say Carmen Jones is? Mm, wow. Good question. I mean, I think I'd say that I am a giver, an innovator. I am um, definitely a lover of people. Uh, you know, I'm an explorer. I'm always seeking to learn new things. So um, I guess in a nutshell, I'm just an outgoing person who definitely, I guess when I die, you could probably put on my tombstone, I was here <laughs> because, yes. you know, people are going to, you know, that's the kind of personality that I have. I think when people meet me, they'll definitely say, okay, she's, she's up to something. And that's kind of what I want to be remembered or who I want to be remembered as. And I would concur with all of that. You definitely <laughs> are an amazing person and your personality has always shined bright. Like it was always a a bright light, no matter uh-huh. where you were. Thank you. you. Out. So, and you continue to, so keep doing that. Keep being you. Mm, I appreciate that. I do. You're welcome. Ironically, when you gave your description, when you talked about being an explorer and learning new things, I said, oh, wow, how ironic, because the next question I have for you is you've worn many hats over the course of your career. What role was the most fulfilling and why? Ooh, that's a tough one, too. These are good questions. I won't say that there was one role that was the most fulfilling. I'll say that each of the things, everything that I've done in my life has played a, a role. They, each thing that I've done has taught me something for, you know, for the, the place that I was in my life. You know, I've been a teacher. That was extremely fulfilling. You know, I've been a mentor. That was incredibly fulfilling. I am still am a mentor, but I was actually doing it in, in a, you know, every day, you know, five days a week kind of capacity you know and then I you know worked at Foot Locker that was fulfilling in a way you know it taught me customer service and people skills you know so uh and I know you spoke about this I worked on the red carpets and 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 worked for celebrities here in Atlanta that was fulfilling because I got to meet new people and new doors open for me so I think in the stage that I am in my life right now I will say that, of course, the Black Girl Social Club is the most fulfilling thing for me because I feel I'm walking in my purpose, my intended purpose that, you know, I'm supposed to be here right now. And I keep telling everybody that this is just a divine thing that's happened. Um, I truly do feel that way. And so in this moment, the Black Girl Social Club is extremely fulfilling for me. That's awesome. And just reading the testimonials from members and seeing the camaraderie in the community and the relationship, I know that it's fulfilling for them as well. So I, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to membership opening. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to have you. <laughs> yes. So when you think about your career journey, is there anything that you wish you would have known before you got started? Oh, my uh yeah (laughs) uh yeah so many things I mean but I'm kind of glad like I'm one of those people who likes to kind of learn the hard way I know that sounds weird but I think all of my challenges helped me to become the person that I am like I said before um so yeah there are certain things I wish I would have known but there are certain things I'm kind of glad I didn't know because it taught me the lessons that I needed to learn And I'm not the kind of person that thinks I need to know everything. I mean, even in this moment, of course, I don't know everything. And the things that I don't know, I surround myself with people who do know. And so, you know, again, always learning. But I think one of the main things, you know, especially with Black Girls Social Club that I wish I would have known going into it was everything that it would take to run an organization of this magnitude, like, the operations piece, the legal piece, the 
financial piece, all of these things that go into it. Yeah, right. you know, I started it as, a, as an organization, you know, where I just wanted to have fun and get to know other Black women and provide that experience for them. But, you know, it, it gets to a point when an organization becomes as large as this one, over 2,500 members worldwide, that other factors then come into play. Right. So, um, you know, just kind of, I wish I would have kind of had that kind of foresight, um, but it's all good because we're there, we're making it happen, and uh, I have a great team to help me along the way, so. Yes, amazing. And I agree. I was reading bios and I thought to myself, oh my gosh, this is Black Girl Magic. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yes, love my team. Shout out to the team. <laughs> Fantastic. Speaking of Black Girl Magic, how do you define Black Girl Magic for you? I define Black Girl Magic as literally being who you want to be. You know, I think a lot of times Black women, we have to do so much for everyone else we have to step in and step up all the time whether it's on the front lines of black lives matter protests whether it's in our homes whether it's in the workplace and a lot of the times we're undervalued in in those places right and for me (laughs) black girl magic just means being who the hell you want to be and doing it well. And so I encourage all Black women to, to, to be who they want to be, whether you want to travel around the world or you want to be a doctor or you want to be a blogger. Do it, girl, because, you know, <laughs> I think the world owes that to Black women to allow us to just be who we want to be. And that's what I call Black Girl Magic. Yes, just be. <laughs> just be. Can we just be? You know, exactly. can we just be? <laughs> Oh, goodness. just know you are speaking to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So with regard to that, I understand that the Black Girls Social Club, and for everyone listening, um, the acronym is BGSC. It started with a girls' night. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah. So, you know, I'm here in Atlanta and, you know, I'm originally from Virginia, like, like you mentioned. And, um, I moved to Atlanta from DC and there's no, I don't have any family here. Don't have any friends here. You know, I I really truly started from scratch and um, you know, that can get lonely, you know, as much of a loner as I am, you know, like I said, I grew up as an only child. I'm extremely independent. It can still be hard. What I did find was that you know, working on the Atlanta, in the Atlanta entertainment industry, I was meeting a lot of people going to a lot of different places and quote unquote networking, but not really making those connections that I was seeking. And I was seeking more connections with black women like myself, like-minded black women. And so, you know, there was a small group of women here in Atlanta that I had made friends with and I had invited them over uh, for a night of just you know, food, drinks, meditation, you know, uh, exchanging goals and talking about our goals for the new year. Child, by the time we left, we were crying, you know, we were just like, you know, tugging each other, asking each other when we were going to do it again. And so I realized that I had provided a space for other Black women to be open and to just let their hair down. And that made me feel great. And so I knew if I needed that, me, who many people considered to be a strong person, an independent person, if I needed that space, I could only imagine what other Black women who were experiencing so much more, you know, motherhood, marriage, you know, all kinds of things they're experiencing, that they needed that space. And so that's where I got the idea to create a group. I said, okay, well, I'll just create a group of women because people were already asking me at the time, you know, where are you going when I was on the red carpet? Can I come with you? You know? And I said, well, I'll just create a group and everybody can go, you know, we'll all go. So that's how the uh, first club, the first chapter, uh, as we now know them, started here in Atlanta. And then once I started that, 
you know, I had no idea that people were going to take me seriously. <laughs> you know, like I had no idea, <laughs> you know, people were going to actually want to join. And so it grew like wildfire. So then it grew to DC, then it grew to New York, then it grew to Miami and all over, literally all over the world. And my mind was blown. And that's how I knew that I had created a space in, 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 that I had filled a void. Yeah. And so that's how it started. And it's, we've only been, we've only been up and running for a little over a year. That's amazing. Thank Absolutely you. Amazing. That's how, you know, like you said earlier, just being, that's how, you know, you're on the right path. Uh-huh. because it, it all comes together. It just, it flows naturally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It all flows. It all fell together. And uh, I still can't believe it because I actually was just working, uh, you know, doing this from my, from my computer, my old broke down computer that I have since got rid of. But, you know, at that point, members were signing up. I had figured out a way to get members to sign up and I was doing everything manually. And so they would sign up and I would manually send them an email and, and they, I would manually add them to their chapters and all of these things. And it was very, very organic at the time. And, um, and I could manage it. It became too much and I had to, I had to get a team. So yeah, that's how it started. Wow. Well, hats off. <laughs> Amazing. So for anyone that's listening that might be interested in joining Black Girl Social Club, what are some of the benefits of becoming a member? Well, the very first benefit that I always like to tell, you know, members is a very basic one. It's it's the benefit of connecting with Black women around the world. Um, and I know a lot of times that doesn't seem like that would be considered a benefit, but it truly is when you think about having a connection to women all over the world. If you want to travel to um, Hong Kong, you know someone there. If you want to travel mm-hmm. to the UK, you know someone there. If you want to travel across the, the country, there's someone there. Uh, you know, um, just that aspect alone is a huge bonus. But aside from that, our members get access to different events, exclusive events. Um, like we just had an event with Sister Soldier. It was a, an exclusive event to talk about her new book. Recently, uh, well, we'll be doing a screening coming up. I can't reveal that yet, but it's with a major network. You know, we've talked to founders and CEOs. We've had Spanish classes. We've had resume, free resume review for our members. We've had all kinds of amazing benefits for our members. And I think for, you know, the rate, which uh, is, is $19 a month, I think what we offer to our members is, is just a really good, well-rounded um, set of benefits. And our members also get discounts and deals from our partners. So they get percentages off of certain stores, whether they be online or in person or, or different services and things like that as well. Very nice. Thank you for mm-hmm. sharing. Mm-hmm. So what has been the most impactful lesson that you've learned on your journey as founder and CEO of Black Girl Social Club? Oh, the most impactful lesson. I mean, I'm going to keep it really real with you. This isn't really like, you know, I know when people think about Black Girl Social Club, they think about like fun and bubbly and happy and all that stuff, which it is. But I think one of the hardest and most important lessons for me has been that even in that environment, you still kind of have to do what you think is best because you'll have a lot of people who don't think that what you're doing is the right way to do it. They may not agree. They may not agree with, you know, our, our protocols or our policies or whatever the case may be. And you still have to keep pushing because we, we, we created this, this club for black women, but that doesn't mean that it's a perfect fit for all black women. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, you, you may not like the, you may not like the product or what we have to offer and that's fine. It's not always going to be a good fit. And I think that's something that I had to learn and I had to deal with. Because in my mind, I'm just thinking we're going to be one big happy family. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but of be, course, this is for everyone, right? But 
you have to, when you're doing stuff like this, you have to know that it's not going to be for everyone and not everyone is going to like it. And that's something that you kind of just have to deal with when you've created something. And so, um, and I think that's my toughest lesson so far is just being okay with that. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Totally understand. (laughs) (laughs) So in addition to your work to empower and inspire Black women, you are also on the advisory board for the Birth Advocacy Project. So ironically, this show was actually started following a miscarriage that I had last year in March. It was a Mm -hmm. month long miscarriage. And Mm -hmm. the situation was so crazy that I just couldn't believe it, but it gave me the push I needed to start this show. So when I saw that you were also on the advisory board for BEAT and what you all are doing to help with regard to awareness and advocacy for prenatal and perinatal care, especially for black women, I was like, oh my gosh, I would love to learn more about that. So I'm sure our listeners as well would love to learn more about what you all are doing and how they can support that as well. Yeah, yeah. First of all, I'm very sorry to hear that. I think I know that's definitely um, probably one of the most difficult things you've had to deal with. So I want to extend my condolences to you. Um, you. But uh, so I'm, I'm, my role, I'm pretty new actually on the board. I'm, I'm still kind of feeling my way around. Morgan White, the director of Beep, reached out to me because she believed in me and she thought I would be a great fit. Uh, you know, I talk a lot about Black women and our issues. And so, you know, she kind of brought me on board and she's been a pleasure to work with. But essentially... The goal of BEEP, which uh, is Birth Equity Advocacy Project, is to, to create awareness around the issues that Black women face when they are pregnant or when they're going in to give birth, how racism always shows up in everything we do. You know, it, it's just crazy how much racism just shows up even in the hospitals or when right. women are trying to give birth, right? And so just acknowledging that that's happening coming up with different policies or, you know, and lobbying for policies that will benefit Black women and women of color and things like that. Because I don't think people realize how much even the state that you live in impacts what your birthing journey is going to be like. Or what, you know, in Georgia, it's one of the most dangerous places to give birth. Wow. Yeah, for Black women. And so just really spreading the word about that kind of thing and advocating for Black women, that is the goal of BEEP. And so, like I said, I'm, I'm still a newbie and I'm still learning so much, but Morgan has been so gracious and teaching me and, and guiding me, but it really is something that I want to talk about because I'm a Black woman. I hope to become a mother someday. And I know so many other Black women who are mothers or, you know, want to be mothers or, you know, have lost children. And this is a very important topic. And I don't think it gets talked about enough. And I don't think people know who to talk to about it, where to go to talk about it. And I want to kind of help women get rid of that shame too, that shame and that Um, feeling that they have of isolation and loneliness around around this issue. I think that's an awesome topic and platform because living through it, I'm just grateful to be here because there's Mm -hmm. no reason why after a DNC, it took a whole month. Uh Right. (laughs) Like that, it just doesn't make sense. And there were even the birth of my daughter was crazy. So I'm just grateful for the work that you and the Uh, birth equity advocacy project is doing to bring that awareness and also to help combat the racism that we're seeing and unfortunately it's in the news every day so you can't get away from it Mm -hmm. but I love the fact that what you're doing far extends beyond even the social aspect I I noticed on your site it was talking about the mental aspect Um, Mm -hmm. just having that community Right. It's spiritual, right. mental, it's all of those things. So kudos to you and your team for doing what you're doing and, and the work that you're doing uh, with Beep as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, the, the mental part is what gets us to the social part, you know, yes. and, and vice versa. You know, it is, they both go hand in hand. You can't be social 
you know, if you're not mentally where you need to be. And sometimes the social part helps you be more mentally uh, stable and where you want to be. So, you know, they both go hand in hand. (laughs) So true. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So what would you tell other goal getters about goal setting and finishing well? Mm. Well, I think my advice would be know when to hold them and know when to fold them. <laughs> That's I <my> love it. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I think with a lot of quote unquote goal getters, um, we're always setting goals. We're always trying to come up with the thing that we think is going to fulfill us or the thing that we think is going to be the next big thing or whatever the case may be. But what I like to tell people is see a thing and focus on that and see it through, but know when it's time to pivot or it's time to change directions. And the way that you do that is by doing research, by doing a market analysis, by doing whatever you need to do to figure out, is this the goal that is reasonable? Is this the goal that makes sense for me in this moment? Do I have the resources? Or if I don't have the resources, where can I get the resources? Um, So I just think setting goals is great, but I always encourage people to just be, I don't want to say realistic because that kind of makes it, puts people in a box, but I want people to know that when they're setting goals, they should definitely consider all the factors when they're doing it. And, um, but I'm, I'm all about following through. So I like to finish and go all the way to the end, but sometimes I want people to know that that it's okay if that doesn't happen and that you figured out that this isn't going to work. Great advice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's almost like staying in a job for too long. You have to, like you right. said, know, know when to follow them. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> know when to keep going too, but yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Great advice. So what role has faith played in your journey? Oh, um, you know, I don't think that I could be here right now without having faith. Um, And I'm one of those people who is, believes in God, believes that the universe is working in my favor, and believes that my ancestors are working in my favor. So I feel like I got all three, you know, just working with me. And so, you know, I pray. I thank the universe. I thank my ancestors for laying the foundation for me. um, Cause I know without them, there is no me. And I couldn't be here without them. And I know that without God, there would be no ancestors. And, you know, and so it's just like, they all work hand in hand. And I, and I know that they're all working in my favor. And so I tell people all the time that um, this is divine. You know, where I am is a divine thing that's happened. Everything fell into place just how it needed to right at the moment that it needed to. And so all I have to do is show up and do my part. All I have to do is be good to people, stand in integrity and walk in my purpose. And my ancestors, the universe and God is gonna work in my favor. And so I believe that. And when stuff starts going awry, I take a step back, I regroup, but I don't give up because Again, this is, is, you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. And when you know, when it's right, you will know because God will speak to you, speak to you. Your ancestors will speak to you and they're not going to let you fail. So that's, that's where I am with it. (laughs) I love it. So how can our listeners connect with you? So you guys can, if you would like to follow the Black Girl Social Club, you can connect with us on Instagram at the Black Girl Social Club. And you can also visit our website at www.theblackgirlsocialclub.com. And all of the information is right there. Fantastic. And the last question I have is what is one personal affirmation that you live by? Hmm one affirmation that I live by that's a tough one that's a tough one I know right it's like lace you can't eat just one you can't pick just one I know you know what <laughs> I think the one that I've been saying a lot and like that hangs up in my office is work hard and be nice to people 
And like, and, and that's something that I just, I repeat over and over again to myself, like weekly, um, you know, and just that, that's what I live by. Like, I don't know if that's necessarily an affirmation, but I would say more so a motto, like work hard and be nice to people. And that's all I got. (laughs) I love it. Well, thank you for continuing to work hard. And look, clearly being nice to people has definitely worked in your favor. So (laughs) keep doing you, keep being you. Um, You have a beautiful personality. You are a beautiful soul inside and out. And I'm just grateful for this time that we've been able to spend together. And also thanks to your parents for all of the, all of the great lessons they instilled in you. And thank you for being willing and open to sharing that with our listeners. Wow. This has been an amazing experience. And I, and I want to give you your flowers while I'm here. I mean, I can say the same about you, just a beautiful, beautiful spirit. I want to thank you for thinking enough of me to have me in your space. Um, I think what you're doing is amazing, sharing amazing stories, and uh, I appreciate you. Thank you, and likewise. This episode of the CC America podcast is being sponsored by Confident Connotations, creating Christian apparel and accessories that promotes confidence, inspires life, and sparks conversation. Each design is carefully crafted, giving you an opportunity to share your faith. Visit confidentconnotations.com for more information. (laughs) Well, on that note, good people, have a wonderful evening and be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the CC America podcast. We appreciate you tuning in week after week and joining us for stories of faith, inspiration, and transformation. So that you never miss an update, please subscribe at www.ccamericapodcast.com. You can also follow us on all of our social media platforms at CC America LLC. You can also just search for CC America on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. We hope that you are encouraged and inspired by this show. If so, please don't hesitate to share the episodes or let people know that you are listening so that they too can be inspired. We appreciate your support and until next time, be blessed.